Hello, my name is Grace Moon from Step With Christ Church, and I will be presenting about Indonesia. Um, so this presentation will include three parts, um, the general information, the spiritual background, and the prayer topics for Indonesia. Um, so Indonesia is an archipelagic country located in Southeast Asia, lying between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Um, five major islands make up Indonesia, uh, which is Sumatra, Java, Kalimantan, Sulawesi, and Papua. But there is a total of over 18,000 islands. Um, and the capital of Indonesia is Jakarta. Um, about 700 um, languages are used in Indonesia because there's such a um, wide diversity of um, tribe and culture. And each tribe has their own language that is different than others. Um, however, the largest language spoken is Bahasa Indonesia, and it's used in almost every formal occasion due to the obligation from the UUD 1945 or the Constitution of Indonesia to speak Bahasa Indonesia. Um, so we'll talk about religion now. Indonesia is predominantly Islamic, so about 87.2% of the population is Islamic. And Christianity is about 7%. And to put that into numbers, um, there are 24 million Christians 17 million Protestants, and Indonesia has the second largest Christian population in Southeast Asia after the Philippines. Um, for the education, as of now, Indonesia struggles to provide inclusive, high-quality education to its citizens, and there may not be much incentive to obtain a tertiary degree, and unemployment rates are highest among university-educated Indonesians. Um, Indonesia is a member of G20 and classified as a newly industrialized country. Um, it is the 16th largest economy in the world by nominal GDP and the seventh largest in terms of GDP. Um, and as of 2020, the total population is 273,523,620. And so for you guys to understand the culture a bit more, I um, we'll show you guys some dishes that they eat in Indonesia. And so these are the three most popular ones. First being nasi goreng, which is um, a fried rice, and gado gado, which is um, a type of salad, and satay, which is a skewered grilled meat. Um, so if you guys want to make some Indonesian dishes, you guys can make those. And um, so I interviewed Grace Jotama, who is currently living in Jakarta, Indonesia, working as a teacher for elementary students. She serves Jakarta Mission Church, and some of you may know her, um, and how she recently got married in March to a remnant who did elementary ministry with her in LA. So the first question I asked her is, how is COVID affecting society and churches? So starting with society, she said everyone is wearing masks, and however, they're still going out because it's not a complete lockdown. Um, but there's a limitation on activity. So people are trying to stay in as much as possible and places are starting to open slowly and schools are slowly opening, but um, it is still taking place mostly online and they are all just waiting for progress um, because of this virus. And for churches, um, COVID is affecting her church in particular because there is a decrease in church members um, most of them are Korean and they have returned back to Korea because of this virus. And in general, religious gatherings have been prohibited. Um, in some provinces, um, they have allowed gatherings of five or less, but in remote areas, they have no access to internet, so they're not able to worship online. So the ministers have been going to the houses of the congregation members to have service with them. Um, with COVID, um, churches have been facing financial difficulties in general and because um, they are not receiving financial support. So it is a hard time for the churches right now. And um, now I'll share about the spiritual, societal, and physical mental problems most commonly found in Indonesia or most particular to Indonesia. Um, the teaching materials 
um, has the it's um, very Islamic um, value based and belief based. And so um, because it, Indonesia has the biggest Islamic population in the whole world, and although they're not as strict as Malaysia in enforcing these laws and policies based on Islamic beliefs, Indonesia is starting to impose stricter laws. Um, and this connects to the societal problem where Indonesia has been prone to following trends of US and powerful nations. And the reason why they are imposing stricter laws is because they're modeling after Malaysia or other countries that um, are enforcing these laws based on these Islamic beliefs. Um, so we can say that they do not have a strong sense of their own identity and culture because historically they have been colonized by not just one, but many countries and many nations. Um, and so historically, only the Dutch was able to receive education in Indonesia. And so intellectually, they are a bit behind compared to other countries that were colonized. And there is also a huge gap between the rich and the poor. And you can picture the rich as um, in the movie Crazy Rich Asians. Um, for physical slash mental health, um, there is a severe so shortage of mental health practitioners. So there are about over 270 million people, but only 773 psychiatrists. And um, because Indonesia is located in a region with high risk of earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions, a lot of people have been affected by these disasters. Um, they need they need psychological support to go through the difficult times of losing their loved ones and their belongings and the fear of um, fear of future disasters. Not only that, um, physically they have poor hygiene. So um, to give another example, um, you can eat the street food in Malaysia and be totally fine. But if you eat street food in Indonesia, there is a possibility that you can die. Um, now moving on to the spiritual state of churches in Indonesia. Um, so the prosperity gospel is um, more domi dominant here. So for example, Joel Osteen. And this is really seen when you meet Christians and churches. Um, there is a really big Reformed Theological Seminary in Indonesia that is close in um, relation with Westminster, but um, however, the students at the, the theological seminaries do not know the gospel, but only go because they receive scholarships. Um, and also because um, the population um, is about 87% Islamic, it is a very religious country. And you can often hear people say, God is with us, um, because it is a very common saying. However, it does not have much meaning. Um, and the most important, we'll move on to prayer topics. So this is um, Grace Shotama's personal prayer topic um, for her field and um, for Indonesia. And so she was questioning, how are we as a nation going to deal with the new normal? And that is what her field is questioning, the field of education. And um, her prayer topic is, as people who have the true gospel, how should I approach the situations going on in the field? And how can we as individuals that are in a state where we can only stay at home evangelize? And um, she said that they have formed a team of translators. Um, and uh, her prayer topic is for the remnants and the translators to receive strength when translating. And so they are literally scattered all around Indonesia. So they're not able to gather together but even still for them to be in unity and be strengthened. And for the pastors and ministers, um, the huge population and vast diversity all around Indonesia um, is in a way an obstacle for evangelism. However, she believes that if they're able to learn this language, the Indonesian language and their culture, it is a very big step towards evangelism in the land of Indonesia. So, um, um, let's pray that they can overcome this obstacle and even raise disciples in um, the various tribes in the land of Indonesia. Um, and right now what is taking place is um, churches from Korea and Parapang have been taking turns doing ministry in the different islands. 
And however, they cannot do field evangelism because it is not a free, free country like America. And they cannot hand out materials to people. However, the method that they have been using is going to theological seminaries or Christian schools um, and talking to the professors and students and evangelizing to them, which um, she said is more effective. And so now that we've um, heard all about Indonesia and um, the prayer topics, um, we'll have a short time of prayer together and um, keep in mind the land of Indonesia um, as we are here. And so at this time, um, let's pray. <clears throat> 